I added another 40 feet of track to the top end of the railway this week, so it seems like a good time to answer a question I get asked a lot. How much does it cost to build your own railway? Well, obviously, that depends on what you're building, and how you are building it, and where you're building it, and what you're going to do with it. So, it's not an easy question to answer, but I'll have a go. All I can do is talk about what I'm making here, and you can take from that what you like. Usually, people buy ready-made rails, and often sleepers too, which is easy, but not cheap. I couldn't do that here in Ireland anyway, even if I wanted to, because they just aren't available. So I made up my own design, and I'm happy with it, because it works. It's the cheapest way I could think of that's still strong enough to work. And it's really easy to put together, and you can do this with it. There are only three main parts. The sleepers, the rails, and the pegs that hold the two together. My sleepers are made of wood. I'm using 3 by 2 Douglas fir. It costs around 50 cent a foot, so 1 euro per sleeper. The rails are flat bar steel. It comes in various sizes. Mine is 50 by 8 millimeter and each length costs around 38 euro 50 including tax. The pegs are cut from round galvanized steel pipe. It costs about 14 euro a length and I get around 60 pegs from each length of pipe. So that makes them about 23 cent each. I'm using these sizes because my railway is 15 inch gauge. That's 15 inches between the rails. But 15 inch gauge is considered quite big for a field or garden railway. If you weren't planning to carry heavy loads with yours, you could go much smaller. 12 inch gauge is much more common and seven and a quarter inch gauge is more common again. And if you built that size track, you could use lighter materials and still carry people around. A bit carefully though. <laughs> And you could have tighter turns as well. But mine is for carrying heavy logs around and other things. So I'm happy with the gauge I chose and the materials I'm using to make it. So for a 20 foot length of track, which is the length that the steel bar comes in, I need two lengths of steel bar, obviously. 15 sleepers. 30 pegs. And all that comes to a total of 100 euro, plus 30 nuts and bolts, about 10 euro, and say 5 euro for the creosote. And we're not finished yet because there's the ballast too that goes under the rails, but that's not easy to quantify. How high do you want to go with yours? How wide? So let's just say 10 euro worth of stone for each length minimum. So now we're up to a whopping 125 euro per length or 20 euro per meter or 650 per foot or 50 cents an inch <laughs> if you want to do it like that. I'm building this railway bit by bit whenever I can afford another length or two. Materials were much cheaper even a few months ago so this hasn't actually cost as much as you'd expect. But still, it's not cheap and it will probably get more expensive before it's finished. I hope you will look at your own local prices and see how lucky you are. We in Ireland live in one of the most expensive countries in the world, so yours is most probably cheaper. So be happy. Materials and fuels have been artificially cheap for many, many decades. And they're only now slowly beginning to catch up with reality. So no moaning, okay? We are lucky we can still get them at all. I really like my railway, and it's now nearly 200 feet from one end to the other, plus the sidings into the drying shed. Of course, with all the money I've spent, I could perhaps have bought a dodgy old quad bike or something, but then I'd need a track for that to go on, or else everywhere would be mud, and that would easily double the costs. Also, 
Where's the fun in that? <laughs>